So what I want in the stretching is to, can you see it going? Yeah, what I want in the stretching, ideally the horse will take my contact forwards, downwards. I cannot make it. <clears throat> I could force the horse's head down anytime. That's not a problem. But I can't force the horse to take my contact forwards. Nobody can. You can't make a horse accept you. You can't make somebody hold your hands. It's nonsense. That's a good boy. So we'll just move the shoulders over. Yeah, that's a good boy. Yeah, that's a good boy. And the steps gradually, as the minutes go by, develop a little bit more life. And I'm not having to work hard. The, the horse starts, as it, as it gets more comfortable with everything, the horse starts to give me more trot. And that process should continue for the rest of the session. The same in canter. And there's a good boy. Again, I want the horse to nod forwards, downwards. The nod of the head is important. If you ride canter, probably the most, the single worst instruction that you could give somebody is, is to keep their hands still in canter. The horse needs freedom to nod. Nod, limit the back, steps behind. It doesn't matter whether it's extended canter or pirouette speed canter, there's still a nod, there's still a movement if the horse is allowed to shoot. There's a good boy. Oh. There's a good boy. And the canter, I'll ask him to bend his neck a little. Again, testing the inside rein. Um, control, testing whether he's happy to take my outside rein forward. I'll move the shoulders over a little in canter also. Just like in trot. But what I want to do is put the inside leg on a little bit more pressure. And the horse should move his shoulders out. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, don't stop on me. That's yeah, a good boy. Uh oh. Uh, so this is what I'm wanting in trot now. This is this is just what I want to see. This is good. And it's taken what? 20 minutes? That's quite normal. As they get more advanced, it does not get quicker. In fact, I think as, it gets, as they get more advanced, this working in process takes longer. The horse, the horse is getting a little older, they, they have more body mass. They probably have more uh, memories that they have about what's going to happen in the work. They start to become a little bit more protective. So to me, that is absolutely normal, that kind of working. They need this kind of time. Then we'll just have a little break. And the break now is very different from the first walk. This to me is no leg, no rain. This is blob time. This is the time the horse can have a, uh, a spit and a drag. He can have a think. He can just talk to his mates and see and, and just go into his own little place in his, in his mind. And they, I find it helpful to give them this little, these few seconds of time out during the work. He'll often stop and have a scratch. That's fine. He can do that. As long as he doesn't leave the arena. Hey boy. And then we're going to start work. And what I'll probably do now, Linda, is stick my spurs on. Yeah, thanks. I might work the horse a bit without spurs first, but today I think um, we'll just put them on now. Can thanks, you Sonny. Turn with your back to us. You so can't hear it. Can't hear yeah. It. Yeah, that's all right. Well, not much, I can, not, not, much, not much I can do about that. Yeah. Um, is your girth all right? 
Oh, probably not. Damn, I failed my pony club exams again. Thanks. Cheers. We'll get uh, we'll, we'll get on with this a bit and then. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 <coughs> right. So now the next stage is work time. This is work time. Hey boy, this is the bit you like, isn't it? Good boy. Work. So the first thing to do in the work is to make sure that the brakes and the accelerator work and we work them separately. So we'll say trot. I'll use more of the arena. I realize I can't talk up this end. Go faster. Good. And slower. Oh, oh, oh. There's a good one. So we just need to know that we can go forwards and slower and stop and start. Good boy. Good lad. Oh, oh. That's not very pretty. That's a bit better. Ish. Come. Oh, that's a good boy. So now at this stage, I, I, I need to think. Um, we're still trying to be careful with the contact. The contact that I have in the stretching, the quality of that is what I'm trying to get to as we work Grand Prix. When we work Grand Prix, I still want that feeling of the rain is soft, the rain is light, the rain is forward. Um, I find it impossible to uh, train horses with strong rain. Um, <coughs> I'm not strong enough. I never will be. I have no interest in trying to be. I can only ride horses that, uh, if I can ride them light and soft. Any horse can be trained to work light and soft. Any horse. Um, as soon as you start being strong, they are going to lock through their bodies completely. They're going to lock their jaw, lock their neck, and then they'll lock their back. And then if you try to create movement doing that, if you try to create more advanced work doing that, the only way you can do that is by being stronger and stronger with your driving. And then you see these sort of six foot ten Germans that sit and drive and are immensely powerful. Well, that's great. They can be successful doing that. I can't. I'm not that strong. And to be honest, if I was, I wouldn't want to, because I think it's a crap way to ride. If we can't get the horse working with us, why bother? I mean, the whole purpose of the job is to, is to create stuff that we enjoy riding. So we'll go faster, we'll slower ride with quite a bit of vitality at this stage. Come, mate. Simple exercises, a little bit of shoulder in. Oh, oh, I'm getting slightly run away with here. Oh, wait, good boy. Now we'll just do some simple bits of sideways. That was a pretty lousy beginning from me. Sally will tell me off for that. Good boy, good boy. So I just want to know that I can go faster, go slower. The object, uh, when you come to do more and more of the Grand Prix work, there are some extensions, but most of the Grand Prix test is in collection. So we're spending more and more time trying to get the horse active, active at a slow speed. Collection means it's working very actively, pretty slow, and it's doing it very, very comfortably, very, very light. Getting all those three things together is immensely difficult. Getting any two of those three is easy. To get all three, very difficult. Very good. So I like those. I can give away the reins if I want. Good boy. Ho. Ho. Good boy. So I'm now starting to get what feels like quite a nice trot. That was a better start. Good boy. And we gradually make the sideways steeper. Good lad. Ho, ho, ho. Still getting slightly run away with here, but we don't worry about things like that. Oh. Ho. Oh. Going a little fast. Good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. Oh, oops.
good lad. I'm quite happy to do a fair amount of this trot work rising. I'm trying to develop more and more body movement. You can do that easier rising. I'd, I'll sit when I have to sit. Oh. That's a good boy. So start playing more and more with the simple half halts. Say, so come back. Good boy. And the half halt of the, with a horse like this takes quite a few strides. You come back as slow as you want, then get things soft and light, and then ride forwards again. So, concerned, there is actually no such thing as a half halt. It's just a descriptive way, a description of three separate exercises. You slow down. Come on, son. He's giving me some rhythm changes as I slow. He's, he's a bit confused here. And you, I probably am too. Slow and then soft and then forwards. The half halt with a novice horse might take you a couple of circles. With a medium horse might take you 10 or 20 strides. With a Grand Prix horse it ends up taking maybe three or four strides. It's not this quick instant slap in the teeth, slap in the ribs and something miraculous is supposed to happen. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. So the trot is starting to, the trot is starting to feel more uh, rideable. Good boy. Good boy. So we're having, having another little break. We'll get on with a bit of canter work. And then I'll pass the machine over to Sally. Sally can scream at me as I uh, do the last few minutes of working in before the test. She helped me a lot at the Horse of the Year show, working in. It's really good to have eyes on the ground. None of, all of us need more eyes on the ground. Um, <coughs> you just have to look at the super work that Carl Hester, Charles Dujardin have done through constant, constant eyes on the ground. And this is one of the things that we lack in this country. We all spend far too much time riding alone. We need, we need people around. We need eyes. As a good boy. So again, canter. Can we go faster? Can we come slower? Good boy. Good boy. There's a good lap. Steady. There's a good boy. Oh. Oh. One thing uh, with uh, the next the next half pass, um, I'll count the number of steps across. And this for the advanced horses, well, even for sort of medium level horses, to me is important that you know how many steps you're taking. To I'll explain in a moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So, oh, I'll wait. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he's going across in 13, 14 steps, which is actually very good. Um, I'd be happy to take 14, 15, 16 steps across. I, with, we have to do, um, in the Grand Prix zigzag, you only have six steps to go either side of the center line, um, six steps between flank changes, six steps sideways one way, six steps sideways the other. If your steps sideways are too small, then that movement becomes nonsense. <clears throat> and what we like horses to do is get used to a medium level horse. I will just about accept going 10 steps from the long side to the center line in half past. Uh, Priest and George, I wouldn't, there's too many. They need to be able to go across in eight. Eight is a sort of benchmark figure for most horses. If they're taking more steps, they're probably going, they're not collected enough, they're going too much forwards, they're not taking too much sideways. So it's a, it's a little thing, but we get in the habit of counting the number of steps sideways. It is actually a useful indication for us.
Oh. Steady. Now it's going a bit fast. Good. Good boy. Sorry. <clears throat> we'll always start the changes with a few fours and a few threes. We just don't go straight into the twos and ones. <clears throat> I think it's good to sort of warn the horse what's coming. Make him wait. Wait for me. Didn't particularly like that first change. There's a good boy. Wait. <clears throat> oh. Oh, wait. His response from the leg at the moment is a little too forwards, a little bit less. No, that was my fault. Sorry, son. I want him just to wait and I guess Sally to help me with this in a minute. I want him to wait for my leg and go so much forwards from my leg, more from the leg. Oh, that's good. Good boy. It's nice having a good mirror. We can check straightness with those changes. Oh, that looks quite flash from here. Goodness me, Bowie. Very good. Oh, yeah, thank you. So I'll give him a little break and then we'll get on with some. No, 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 please, no, no, no. We'll get on with some pirouettes and some, and then a bit of PF passage. Um, I think I should let you have this now. I need to focus a bit on these pirouettes. Um, it's the wrong one. I find that difficult with all that talking. Thanks, Gil. This one's still working? Good. <clears throat> We'd just say the pirouettes are probably the most difficult they can to work in Grand Prix. Um, the, it's it's e easy to do them badly, easy to do them semi, but to do them uh, with the horse really comfortable is difficult. Sorry, you, you keep talking. You keep talking, sorry. Hey. You're not coming through, Sally, on that.
Sorry, I can't hear if you're talking to me, say. No, no. Don't worry, you you talk to them. Oh, oh. Good boy. Let's do some PF massage. What's that? Turn what? No, no, no. You you just you to talk to them. That's that's important. I mean. That's, that's what this is for, you talk to them. It's a good boy. Okay, so now we're going to get on with the side. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, whoa, whoa. I'll do that music now.
field. We know it will work correctly. We'll take the rain forward stretch. We know we've done a fairly good job on board. It's very yeah. difficult when you're at show to know exactly yeah. how much to lose, how little to lose. At this level, we have a small window. Oh, shh, 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 shh. Right, do you want us, should we do that music? Thanks, Sally, that's good. This is where it all goes to pieces now. Everything we've done just goes out the window. I have to do a test. Oh, God, how terrifying. Hey. You ready? Where we see if we brought the right tape, the right disc, does it work? Now you guys just have to sing, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, whenever you're ready. Come on.
<clears throat> okay, well, we help, we hope you all enjoy it. If you want. <clears throat> Um, see, if, see if there are any questions, if they want. Yeah. Uh, Linda's question was, how long does it take? This was, um, normally it would, to get a horse to baby Grand Prix is about four years. Um, getting a horse to Grand Prix is, we reckon we're about halfway there. When you can do a baby Grand Prix test, you're then half, about halfway. Then it takes about the same length of time again to, um, to get it to really powerful, good, big. We're, we're in that transition zone now. We're trying to make everything bigger, more upright, more uphill. As Sally was saying, it's got to be every, everything in the work is capable of being done better. And that's what we're trying to do. He has no more tricks to learn. He's just got to learn to do them better. So if you say, if you start with a four-year-old by eight, it ought to be all going well. It'll be doing baby Grand Prix. Um, and by sort of 12, 13, it starts to get to its peak. This horse was very peculiar, very different, um, because this horse went to Baby Grand Prix in 11 months, which is just unheard of. I've never, I've never in my life had a horse that's trained as quickly as this. And that, I think, is partly because he's just this amazing temperament. He's just a fantastic dude. And part of it is because he was show jumped, and he was show jumped well. He was show jumped at high level. He was show jumped at Grand Prix. And that meant that to put it really crudely, he understood what a good kick in the ribs meant. It meant get forward now. And it also meant uh, he understood the brakes, the brakes and the accelerator. It is amazing how many advanced horses do not understand properly the brakes and the accelerator. He doesn't understand well enough. It's something which we do every day. We spend time trying to get those, those basic things right. So, uh, but f from his jumping point of uh, his jumping background, you've got a, a you know a meter fifty fence in front. They've, they've damn well got to know what both brakes and leg mean, and with some urgency. So I think that helped the dressage work enormously. And he's got the brain where he picked up the tricks quite quickly. But the major thing is that he was used to being asked quite big questions. So that was a huge advantage, absolutely huge. So, any other questions about anything? Yes, ma'am. Can you always wait to say you will wait to um, work? Yeah. What sort of other things do you do other than this? Like, do you go out and like, go bake in the forest? Yeah, good, very, very good question. The question was, uh, what do we do in the course of a week? Uh, other than the work in the arena. Um, not, as, not as nearly enough, I feel. Uh, but the problem is that I'm never there for a week. So when I'm there, I work them. Um, we do gallop them from time to time. We've got a, a friend with a lovely um, 800 meter track. Um, and he likes that, that's good sport. There's a farm over the road that we ride on occasionally, but nothing like as often as I would like. Um, but for me, the, the uh, and also we've had um, a very good event girl who comes and jumps him. I'm way past jumping, man. I fall off over a pole on the ground. Um, but I think that uh, I think the horses do need a variety, without question. Personally, I find hacking out about as as exciting as watching paint dry. Um, but that's me personally. Uh, to take them galloping, to take to take uh, do some hooning, I think is fantastic for the dressage horses. They need to hoon. They need to gallop. They need to be ridden cowboy style a bit. They don't want a placid, delicate walk around the roads. I think that's a waste of space. But they do need variety, for sure. They, re they really do. And one of the things which embarrasses me is that we've not given him as much variety. But then he does have ladies in his life, so that's a bit... Uh, 
It's almost as exciting as dressage, isn't it, Barry? Yeah.